All right. Well, now, uh, now that we've uh, thanked our underwriter, we need to get right to business here because this is uh, an episode of our emergency podcast system. And the reason it's an emergency today is um, after spending the day, 9-11, listening to the news about Donald Trump bragging to Bob Woodward on tape, bragging that he saved the ass of the Saudi prince, who is the leader of Saudi Arabia now. He saved his ass. That's what Trump said. He saved his ass from Congress because the prince, the crown prince, had um, ordered the murder of Washington Post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. Murdered. And Trump is bragging to Woodward that he saved the ass of the man who ordered the murder, the hit on a Washington Post columnist. My friends, uh, this is an emergency episode of Rumble because not that it just hit me today because I've felt this way for four years, but I don't know, something about this on 9-11 made me realize how dangerous every single day is between now and November 3rd you're already feeling it, I know. Just just the news from the last few days. Now couple it with the news from the last two weeks. It's, it's so mind-bendingly awful and disgusting and the revelation of who he really is has put us all in jeopardy. And I'm not, you know I'm not exaggerating this because I know a lot of you are feeling it. And we have to figure out what to do to A, protect ourselves, B, to protect the election, and and C, to remove Donald J. Trump. More on that later. I need to get to what I want to say to you about the emergency that we're in. Because listening today to Trump, to listen to him brag, I saved his ass. That's what he said. I saved his ass, referring to how he, Trump, protected the crown prince of Saudi Arabia after the prince had a columnist from the Washington Post murdered. This is chilling. It's chilling to hear it, though, especially on this, on the anniversary of 15 Saudi hijackers murdering 2,977 people in New York City in Washington, D.C., and in Pennsylvania. 9-11-2001. These 15 Saudis led a devastating attack on the United States. And let me just, right now, let me just state the obvious, because you never hear this being discussed, that it was Saudis that did this. And you never hear that Saudis attacked the United States, right? Never hear never hear described that way. They're Muslims, Arabs, right? I want I want to just let me state the obvious here, okay, and see if you agree with this. If fifteen Iranians had committed this heinous act, Iranians now, if they had committed this heinous act on that day, nine eleven. Let me tell you, I can assure you that our government and the media would have declared that Iran, Iran had attacked the United States. They wouldn't have said they were Iranian hijackers or they were, you know, uh, Muslims. No, they, in fact, the Muslims would have got a break if it had been Iranian. No, if it had been, if they had, hijackers had been Iranian, this is what the headlines would have said. Iran attacks the United States. And you know what? Tell you the truth, if, if it actually been 15 Iranians, the headlines would have been right. Or if they've been Chinese, what if there have been 15 Chinese, 15 Chinese and four from Hong Kong on, um, on 9-11 who hijacked those planes, 15 Chinese nationals hijacked the planes. You can see the headlines. China did it. China. China did it. But 19 years later, no one to this day will state the obvious regarding the Saudis and Saudi Arabia. Because their ass was saved by George W. Bush. (laughs) The day after 9-11, 
with all the planes grounded. You couldn't fly. The skies were empty. George W. Bush, whose family had long, close, personal, and business ties to the Saudi royal family and to the bin Laden family, he allowed all of Osama bin Laden's relatives and a bunch of Saudi royals who were living in the United States at the time to flee the country via private jets before the FBI could question them and before any investigation could be conducted. No questions must be asked. And poof, they were gone. You know, you've heard me talk about this before if you follow my work. 15 years ago, my crew and I, we investigated all of this. And we put it in a documentary, Fahrenheit 9-11. Americans wanted to see the truth. And millions then learned the truth through this film. That Bush was indeed saving the ass of the Saudis. If you haven't seen the film, uh, well, I, I know for a fact that right now you can see it for free on Showtime. If you have Showtime, they've got it for free till deep into October. So check it out there if you haven't seen it. Um, many of you have, and so you know what I'm talking about. The hearts, thinking about this today, the hearts of the families of the 9-11 dead remain broken. Broken because their president and his father colluded with the Saudi royals in business, colluded with the bin Laden family in business, and because he, George W. Bush, had ignored his own national security director, his own national security advisor, warned him one month before 9-11, and actually in the, in the film I, I show the photograph of him being handed the, the top secret document that said that bin Laden was planning to attack the United States with planes. Right there in the beginning of August, Bush knew. Or maybe he never read the report because he went fishing that day and he was on a month-long vacation. So shameful. And now <laughs> our current president, who has also proudly spent his time in office saving the ass of the current Saudi leader and, and of Saudi Arabia and selling them weapons. <sighs> Doing that, instead of protecting the American people, when his national security advisor told him in January, way back in January, that COVID-19, sir, is the greatest national security threat in your presidency. It will be the greatest threat you're going to face. Told him that way back in January. And then Trump, Trump did nothing. He stood down and knowingly allowed 200,000 Americans to die. That is 67 9-11s. Take the dead of this day, take the dead of 9-11 and multiply it by 67 times. And that's how many people have died of the coronavirus. Trump knew so much could have been avoided. As I'm recording this right now, yesterday there were 1,160 Americans who died from this. Yesterday in Italy, there were 14 who died. In France, 30. Countries that got hit hard too, just like we did at the beginning, but then did something about it, paid attention to it, took it seriously. But our leader, who had been told the truth about the virus, decided not to share that with us. And in fact, told us to do the opposite. Don't wear a mask. This will be over when it gets warm out. There's a miracle coming. My friends, this is murder in the extreme. No American other than Confederate President Jefferson Davis and his general, Robert E. Lee, has killed more Americans than Donald J. Trump. Think about that. Civil War, 600,000 plus dead. Thank you, Jefferson Davis and Robert E. Lee. We're heading our over 200,000, probably this weekend. And we've been told by the, the White House task force itself, this could get to 400,000 by Christmas. Dead. 
What if he had chosen to do what any other decent, sane, moral person would have done when informed about this national security threat? Now, you can say, well, hey, you know, Trump didn't actually kill them with his own hands. Yeah, that's true. And I can tell you for a fact that Osama bin Laden did not fly a single one of those goddamn airplanes. So he's innocent? No. Trump is a mass killer. Right now, my friends, it's just 53 days until this bastard gets to hear the verdict of you, the American people. The American people whose collective heart, now crushed, will soon rise. I believe that in my heart of hearts. It won't happen on its own. All of us have to get busy and be busy every single day to do whatever we can do to remove, as Mary Trump said right on the cover of her book, the most dangerous man in America. Thank you for listening to this. I couldn't end the day without sharing my feelings with you. Share yours with me. You can send me an email. I read all my email. Mike at michaelmore.com. You can leave a voice message if you want on this on this podcast platform. There's a link. Just you can leave me a message. And we can all wake up in the morning and get busy, do something. We all have to do something. He was happy. Donald Trump, that he saved his ass, saved the ass of the crown prince, the murdering crown prince of Saudi Arabia, who killed a journalist working for one of our top American newspapers. Don't waste any time trying to convince Donald Trump supporters. It is a waste of time and energy. You need to spend all that energy on getting out the people who are probably not going to vote the people that need to join you and me and remove this son of a bitch. Thank you for listening to this. Um, My apologies for uh, getting perhaps maybe too emotional about this, but I, in honor of those who died on 9-11, we'll fix where we're at right now.